All right, now for a change of pace, and it's been an exhilarating six days of our special coverage on the Nile. We're now coming to the final instalment of this exciting series, and I was privileged to have played a part in the filming of that amazing, those amazing features. It was really a treasure, uh, quite an experience. I'm now happy to cross over to our team in Cairo, where Penina, Mohammed, and Yasser Kim are standing by. Hi, thanks for me. We are live at the Royal Lily in the heart of Cairo, just overlooking the River Nile, a magnificent view of the river and the central business district of Cairo from here. And like you mentioned, I'm joined by my colleagues Mohammed and Yasser Hakim. It's quite been a remarkable journey for the last six days of being here. Uh, and of course for you, Yasser, you've been here much longer. We'll get that to that in a bit. But are there things perhaps you feel as Egyptians and as journalists that we didn't quite bring out about Egypt? Well, let's be honest, the special coverage of the Nile here in Egypt has done a lot. We visited many places, came up with lots of stories, but you cannot be here in Egypt and miss the Abu Simbel Temple in Aswan or the unfinished obelisk there. We need to tell more of the stories of people living of the Nile. We need to know more about their lives and how do they earn the living. What do you think, Yasser? Yes, it's, it's a big country, 90 million Egyptians. It's a huge place. It needs maybe much more time to, to cover all this. Uh, but I'm with you on that. Uh, we've, we've met uh, honey makers, we've met uh, brick makers, we've met date farmers, uh, but maybe we need to get, indulge more and in, in deeper into their lives, meet their children, uh, their families, how they spend their day off away from work, uh, they, how, how do they spend their money, what do they do at night, maybe we need to do that more uh, in the future. Maybe we can do that in future projects. What about you, Penina? How far this journey has affected you personally and your perception of Egypt? Oh, you know, Mohammed, for me being from Kenya, you know, that's upstream, obviously, it's given me a deeper appreciation of this river and obviously a clearer understanding of what it means, its significance, and not really just for Egyptians, but I think for all of the 11 countries that in one way or other are touched by the Nile. And obviously uh, also some deeper insights as to how much we need to preserve this river, you know, an understanding of the huge responsibility that comes with sharing its water. So yeah, it, it's been quite a learning experience for me. I don't know about you, Famida, what are your thoughts? Because you're not even from the Nile Bay and you're from further down south of the continent. Well, Panina, just adding on to what Yasser mentioned, uh, speaking to many of the people who have lives um, from the bottom of the Nile through to Alexandria, it was quite interesting to um, gauge the, how they use the Nile to, to, to farm or how they use the Nile to, to, to exist really in that region. There, of course, are very many stories to tell and certainly not enough time. Ultimately, the experience with the Egyptians across the country, who I think had the greatest impression on the journey we had there, and I'm certain that will stay with me uh, forever, Panina. I mean, I was very envious of you, Famida, because you were much, you were longer, you were, you were here for much longer than we were. So obviously, you got some incredible uh, insights. And speaking of of that, Mohammed and I were here for just a week. Famida and Yasser really were here. They got to get the real experience of Egypt and they, they brought with them some real impressions as well. Let's just hear them out. The Nile stretches about 7,000 kilometers through several countries. Here in Egypt, we've traveled over about 1,000 kilometers from Aswan in the south all the way up 
to Russell Bar, where we are now. And that's also where the Nile River meets the Mediterranean. Yeah, we've been to Aswan, where there's the dam. It's very important for Egypt to control the flooding of water. We've, we've been to Luxor, uh, the, the city with the most number of monuments in the world in, in one area and the beautiful temples. And we've also seen how uh, the, the villagers live off the Nile all the way to Cairo. And now we're at Lara Salbar. What's your personal highlight of this trip? There's so many things that stand out, but one thing I'll always remember is just simply the beauty of the Nile, especially at sunset. And one of the most ideal ways to see that was on a felucca. And, um, you know, we also had a very interesting uh, boatman with us, Adli. So the sunset combined with his drumming on traditional drums and just the serenity of where we were is something I'll take away with me. What did you find most memorable? For me, it was the race. Uh, it was new for me, uh, something I didn't try before, but it was important to highlight the Nile uh, as a form of transportation. So we had a race between a car, our colleague Adil and me in a boat. And we took two positions and we see which is faster. And it was very interesting and obviously the boat won. It gives us an idea that the Nile can be another form of transportation that would help. <laughs> One of the most interesting things was to uh, see, meet people along the way. For example, in Aswan, we spoke to people living in a Nubian village, how they were at one point moved from one area to another, and just how they've managed to, to go along with all those changes and still flourish, even though a smaller community, but they managed to still flourish in that area. And I'm sure uh, throughout the few days, you probably uh, sensed how important the Nile is for Egyptians. It's not just another river. It's, it's the way of life. It's, uh, it's where everyone lives across the Nile throughout the whole country. The rest of the country is just a desert. So, so the Nile is not just water for Egypt. It's, it's much more than that. It certainly is. We were also in Lakso where we spent the day with a family who's been making bricks for generations. And very many of the practices that are done throughout the Nile are things that have been done for thousands of years. For example, making bricks in the very same way they were made perhaps two, three, four thousand years ago. Using soil from the banks of the Nile, water from the Nile as well, creating mud and just all those different elements that come together from the environment to continue life. What was more interesting for me as an Egyptian is to speak with the officials here and about how are we going to preserve the Nile. It's, it's a way of life and we've seen the pollution, we've seen how many people also uh, throw trash and, and, and waste on, on the Nile, which was a bit sad to see. One of the things I was most envious of was your hot air balloon ride that gave you the chance to have this aerial view over the Nile River and also the civilization that grew around it all these years, as far back as the pharaohs, the Valley of the Kings. What was that like? It was an amazing view, seeing everything from the top for me it was something new and something beautiful to see the monuments from up, up there, the Nile from up there, the history, you're just flowing above history uh, that's below you and beside the history you see the people living there, the future beside the past together all in one area, it was amazing. And then once it moved up to Cairo, you also then continue to see its role in terms of tourism. But there's this constant vibe and buzz around the Nile also being a place of entertainment. We call it the city that never sleeps, one of those cities that stay up all night. Egyptians' life uh, begins, entertainment begins late at night. And it's all on, on the Nile as well. So the entertainment, to have a good time, you go and spend the night out on the Nile. So it's not just about food, drinking from the Nile, not just about agriculture, fishing, uh, tourism. So, so it's just part of every moment of an Egyptian's life. Farming is one of the most important aspects of the Egyptian economy and community. For you, you you've met farmers, you've, you've been to farms, you've been to uh, people who live off agriculture and, and crops. Tell me more about how you felt when you met these people and what they were doing. We visited an island not far from Cairo. The proximity to the, the capital is quite interesting because, of course, farmers then would want to send their produce to the capital where it's in demand. We spoke to a family there who'd been 
on this island for at least three generations. They were farming everything from bananas to roses as well as making honey. And this is how that island got its name, the island of honey making. Yeah, so it's been quite an experience just seeing how the river stretches and, and all the stops along the way. And it has been an adventure. I hope you enjoyed it here. Thoroughly. That was a fascinating trip, especially for me. As an Egyptian, it was important that the rest of Africa would also get the feel of how the Nile is important for Egypt, as well as how it's important to other countries uh, on the Nile Basin. The 11 countries for Egypt, it's 95% of its water resources come from the Nile. The living proof uh, for Egypt is the Nile. For other countries, it's power generation, it's water, it's everything. So this program is linking us all together, and I hope the viewers have felt that watching the series. What about you, Famida? Uh, how do you feel during this trip we had together? I was fascinated with things I haven't seen before in Egypt uh, during that trip. What about you? And I'm sure, yeah, so that um, is especially the case, that fascination being from Egypt, but also um, not having explored certain parts of, the, of your country. Now, coming from outside of Egypt, it was also very interesting getting to know certain communities a little bit better, and one of them was the Nubian people and also just witnessing their resilience in terms of their relocation to different parts of the Nile and how their community and their culture perseveres through those changes over the decade. But yes, sir, I believe you do have more for us there in, uh, in Cairo. Yes, uh, Panina a while ago said she's envious about you and me going around this trip uh, over the Nile and she decided to take Mohammed, I'm alone now, she decided to take Mohammed on a boat trip and they go on to the Nile as well and uh, they're over there uh, with uh, a boat from the Royal Lily uh, trying to cruise away from us here but just before they leave I'm going to ask Mohammed a question. Mohammed, uh, you've been around for a week now but you have been traveling around Egypt for a while part of your work or your ledger. Have you seen anything here during the trip with CCTV that you haven't seen before, you haven't experienced before in Egypt? Yes, yes, uh, this special coverage of the Nile in Egypt was full of information, lots of places to visit. I really enjoyed it. Rem it reminded me of the things I've done over 20 past years in one week. What I really liked most was stories told about people living off the Nile. I was inspired by that. I think I'll go track more of them later. Really enjoy the company. Thanks for watching us. That's Salaamu Alaikum from Egypt, Cairo, capital city. Looking forward to see you all back here in Egypt. Penina. In fact, like you said, it's been an incredible journey. Sadly enough, we have to wrap it up. It's been a great pleasure just following this magnificent river and knowing that all the time we were here, you were with us. We've enjoyed your company. We hope to see you again as we continue our exploration of the Nile. Mohammed, shall we? Let's go. Yalla Rayes. And there we say goodbye to Panina and Mohammed as they make that final journey on the Nile, wrapping up our series looking at life, community and the dependence of the Nile River and this time specifically in the most northern country of Egypt. Also taking part in this exhilarating journey, Yasser Hakim, truly an adventure for CCTV Africa.